Welcome back to Shelf 4, Week 2. We're going to get some really rare and unusual and interesting stuff this week. So we're going to kind of go back and forth. We'll start with this guy. This is the Cantering Stock Horse Stable Mate. Really, really, really scarce and hard to find mold. I got, found him actually off of a Craigslist ad for a bunch of stable mates and mini whinnies and drove quite a far distance to get him because you cannot find this mold. It was introduced as part of the Briar Play Mat set and for some reason people went, oh my god he's so ugly or something, I don't know, the rumor mill says that people didn't like the mold and so Briar pulled him, he was only produced for about six months and has not been seen back in the line of stable mates so you cannot find that mold in any color for any price anywhere for the most part. He is exceptionally, he is one of the rarest molds outside of probably the in-between mare. Then this is technically a non-briar, but this is part of the Wilderness series. It was sculpted by Chris Hess and was a part of a series of animals. Um, he's marked on his back, copyright Chris Hess. And there was a whole series. There was a panda and a wolf and a, the, the, um, there was a koala bear. There was a bunch of different pieces. And I think he was trying to make a series, um, but basically they never went beyond some mail order stuff out of perhaps Bentley and Mission Supply House and that kind of thing. So you can almost never find these pieces of the Wilderness series. I do consider them part of this collection because Chris Hess was the sculptor for Briar for almost its entirety of the 1950s up through the 70s. And even though it's not technically a Briar product, it is injection molded plastic by Chris Hess. So this is a really interesting, unusual piece. This is a Briar, believe it or not. This is Kipper. He is a Thule pony. Um, there was a cartoonist in England named Thule that did a whole series of books and <clears throat> um, he did little figurines from um, uh, posters and plates and dishes. And so Briar got the copyright to do Thule ponies. So he's marked on his belly, 1986 Thule. And this is his signature um, font the Thule font, maybe. I don't even know if it has a name. He has the rooted hair, mane, and tail. And he. it was supposed to be a series of three. There was another one, Pumpkin, and then there was another one. This Kipper is the only one that we ever got. And I got this guy from a crazy guy on mail order back in the day when you used to get your paper just about horses and send in a SACE. Um, Self-addressed stamped envelope for the kids nowadays that don't do that kind of thing. Um, so he is another really rare, scarce briar mold that you don't see very much, and particularly you don't see him in good condition with the mane and tail still in good condition. I'm just gonna move him out of the way so we can get to some more good stuff. This is the Django mold in the Chaser um, copper filigree color. I got him when I was doing my series of blind bag openings. So I was quite excited to get him. He is very scarce and um, hard to find in that copper filigree color. Up here on top, we have some of the Chaser Mini Whinnies. I love the Mini Whinnies, so I'll bring this out. This is the original Chaser Blind Bag Mini Whinny in the gold filigree on the draft standing drafter. I think the second one was, and I don't think he had a name, Strawberry was the second series chaser. And then this um, silver filigree thoroughbred running horse was the third series chaser. I've heard there's a fourth series out very recently, so I'm gonna go start hunting again for some more. Now this is one of the rarest pieces in my collection. It is a briar. It is a briar, my money manager. It is a bank. Let me move these guys off of it. And this was before Briar made horses. They made these little toy things as well as um, like steering wheels for international harvester pickup trucks and gear shift knobs and stuff. So this is actually a bank 
and um, you would put your money in here. They're labeled savings, contributions, spending, and presents. And then in order to get your money out, this little top piece comes off and then you can get the money back out for whatever it is that you wanna do. Probably wasn't the most successful toy of the year. I'm not sure a lot of kids were into file cabinet banks, particularly when you only got one little box for your presents. Uh, Mom found me this. This is before they started doing injection molding. This is actually stamp molding. And I'll show you when we get to the checkers, but in injection molding, they heat up the plastic and they shoot it into a mold. In this case, they just stamp the actual piece. So this is an exceptionally rare piece that mom found for me at the Brass Armadillo in Denver, Colorado. So thank you, mom. Um, and we'll move on to these checkers. This I got from Nancy Young. She was one of our original hobby gurus. Yes, this is a Briar product. It is marked Briar Molding Company, Chicago, USA. This is another one of their first Briar um, branded products. This is the first time they put their name on something and sold it. Before then, if you bought one of their International Harvester steering wheels or whatever it was um, It was on your truck and it had no mold mark and it was just another piece on your truck This is the first time that they started making actual stuff that they put their name on genuine all plastic unbreakable American coin design and It is a full box of checkers and you can kind of see how they would have a mold for this. They'd put the plastic in it and then a die stamp would come down and stamp it into the mold to create this pattern. So this is another extremely rare piece. I'm not even sure if anybody has, there might be one other set of checkers and I don't think that there's another money manager around. So these are some of the rarest Briar products that um, anybody has in their collection at this time. Thank you very much. And thank you, Nancy, and thank you, Mom, for helping bring them into my collection. Um, we'll go downhill just a little bit. This is just a Briar Classic. I think he's, um, I forget what name he is. He started as a line that never got finished. It was, uh, they had rooted hair, mane, and tails. I forget what the name of it is. I have a boxed horse in my closet that we'll come across someday. But they had hair, mane, and tails, and they were marketed as, beautiful realistic horses didn't do very well so they put the molded mane and tail on them and they're in the actual regular classics line now and then briar has started to do these little crystal horses i think this is the bryson mold they've mostly been doing them as special runs for briar fest i don't think they have any mold marks on them but they're pretty fun i'm not sure if they're actually considered crystal they look more like um, blown or melted glass to me but they're kind of a fun little addition to the collection. And then this is another one of the um, American Saddlebred. This is one of the Briar Molds breeds of the world horses. They're actually resin, not plastic. This one's sculpted by Christina Lucas Francis. And they're just intended to be another line of very realistic model horses for kids. He's more along the lines, I think, of a art piece than a toy because he's sitting on his base and he's very fragile being resin. Um, he's not as durable to play with as the plastics. So this was a very, very rare section of the collection. Hope you enjoyed it and uh, we'll catch you next week.